Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and author interviews. This week I have four new reviews for you folks at home for episode number 263 of the show. Um, that's going to include a review for Apocalypse, Fairy System, System of the Apocalypse, book number two. Also, Goblin Summoner, uh, a deck building Lit RPG. And then also Null Form, book number one, which is a, a new Russian translation story. And finally, a review for the webcomic SSS uh, Class Suicide Hunter. So I'll give you, uh, uh, let you know what I think about all those things. But first, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. And in Lit RPG News, we have no stories. Sorry. None, uh, nothing really too exciting happening right now. Um, but we do got a bunch of stuff that's come out recently, so we'll jump right into that. Uh, stuff that's come out recently includes Volper book number one, Alpha Rome book number one. Um, this is actually a re-release uh, with a, uh, a more refined translation from Ross Purr. Um, so if you like book number one when it first came out, and a lot of people did, this is the thing. Same, same story, just better translation work. Um, so there you go. Uh, also out right now is City of the Undead in the system book number two. This is a Russian translation story um, from Magic Drone Books. It is um, this is the real life Lord RPG one where the main characters, uh, all the players gets transported to a kind of separate dimension in, in batches. And when they kill monsters, they get cards that could be used, uh, uh, that could be equipment or whatever else the case is. Um, and they fight a bunch of monsters and go through some scenarios. And then once they're done, they go back to the real world. So it's a, kind of a mix between transported fantasy RPG and real life little RPG. So it's an interesting mix. I enjoyed book number one though. Um, also out is the third book in the Trinity of the Hive series, High of Mind. I believe this is the last book in the series considering it's called the Trinity of the Hive. Uh, also out is the second book in the Nothing But Bones series, The Chaos Rift. Book, um, the cover for book number two looks a lot different than book number one. I'm assuming just because the author had a commission <laughs> or from someone else, maybe. Uh, but the first book was just like a skull with like this um, uh, centipede-looking thing going through it. Uh, so if you like that first book, book two is out. Also out is a new series uh, from a new author called uh, Alpha Physics, book number one. Um, also out is the second book in the Salvo series, um, A Demon's Pride, an action-packed Iseki uh, adventure. Uh, this is the one where the demon is accidentally, it, it starts off as a monster RPG story, and then it's transported to a fantasy RPG world where the demon is the main character. And then, you know, levels up as he fights other demons and monsters and, you know, collects like a human group to, to kind of hang with. Um, also out is the fifth book in the Heavenly Throne series, also, the a new story called Forge of Eternity, Alpha Testing. And also, the second book, I think this is, um, Tales of the North Blood, Winter's War. Might be the third book. I'm not really sure. It doesn't say in the title. Um, also, out is The Last Physicist, physicist um, from the Archon book number one. Uh, the second book in the Sosuka online series called Heart of the Void is out. Uh, a superhero lit RPG story is out um, from Andrew Carbeck. He he does a lot of stuff for the publishing company Little BG Freaks, uh, mostly strategy stuff usually, um, but a bunch of other things from them called Tough Guy, a superhero lit RPG story. So there we go. Um, and something new from Stuart Gross, which is the 28th book in this uh, series, End of the Black. Um, Shadows Fall. So a lot of folks actually really enjoy the series. It is adult content, though, just warning you. A lot of adult things happen in that series. So there you go. Okay, on to new Liberty audiobooks. And this is going to include the fifth book in the Ten Realm series called The Fifth Realm um, from the wonderful Michael Chatfield. Also out is the second book in the Production Chronicle, oh, sorry, Production Cycle series called The Library of the Demonium. Um, the fourth book in the Rebel and Jack series is out as an audiobook, as is the Dungeon Fairy third book called Three Lives from the amazing Jonathan Brooks. Uh, a new story from Dean Hegner, Henniger. Uh, this one's set on the seas, apparently, called Limitless Seas, Privateer, out as an audiobook. So there you go. 
Um, the third book in the Divine Seed series called Shri Savior is out as an audiobook. The second book in the Underhero Chronicles is out as an audiobook. Um, and this is actually a c- compilation um, audiobook that has the first three books, actually the entire series, in the Headshot series by Matthew Sieg. And it's actually an entertaining series, zombie RPG apocalypse, um, told from the point of view of the zombie, by the way. Um, as a complete series, all three audiobooks in one, it's like 30 hours worth of material um, that is out. Also, the seventh book in the Apocalypse Gate series, Unexpect- Unexpected Developments, um, is out for you to enjoy as an audiobook. So all kinds of new stuff for you. Okay, on uh, to stuff that's coming out in the near future. Um, this is just a bunch of lists of stuff that we know are coming out because they have pre-orders out or the authors have told us that their show is coming out. And um, that includes on April 17th, Lotus Lake Rise, The Mystic Mage by J. Boyce. Um, on April 23rd, uh, Clan Dominus, The Sleepless Ones, book number six. Uh, now, the reason we have this one here is because it's actually a new book in the series. It was originally uh, published um, under the series title, The World of Aldera. Um, and it's relatively popular, to be honest. Um, but then it got picked up by, uh, I believe it's mentioned on books, and got republished, got retranslated. Uh, the translation was probably a, a big factor for a lot of people not continuing on with the series. Uh, so it's nice to see that they got the full professional translation works, um, better cover art, new title for this series that probably gives you a little uh, better of a, of, a, of a hint as to what the story is about. Um, and this is an actual new book that has never been published um, in that particular series, book six. So if you're a fan of that series, a new story is out for you to enjoy if you remember what happened in the other five books. But they're also published, so you can just read them again. Um, on April 26th, Primal Sorcerer Singularity Online, book number four. April 20th, uh, Rogue Merchant, book number five. April 29th, uh, Killing Them Awfully, The Good Guys, book 11. This is actually was supposed to come out a little earlier in uh, April. It got pushed back to uh, April 29th, so just as an FYI. On uh, April the 30th, Heart of the Forest, Cares Horizon, book number two. Uh, April 30th, in a story from uh, Jez Cahill, K- Jez, <laughs> Age of the Stone, Rise of Mankind, book number one. April the 30th, uh, The Guild Core, book number three. April the 30th, the third book in the Towers of Heaven series. Um, May the 1st, Awaken Online, Hellion. On May the 3rd, uh, NPC's Path, book number four. May 4th, Towers and Rifts, book number two. May the 4th, Jeff, the Game Master, book number one, May 7th from um, Ryan Bruin. I think he's actually publishing this one himself and not through another publishing company, um, Star Tower. So system uh, misinterpret, book number one. So we'll see how that turns out. Uh, May the 10th, the Guns of uh, Keldora. On May the 10th, it'll be Product Seller, book number four. May the 11th, Beta Tester, book number six. May the 11th, the Magnus... Um, book number one, Terra Nova. May the 12th, Necrotic Apocalypse, book number two. We actually reviewed this last week on the show, I believe, for book number one. Really enjoyed it. It's like quite nice. Um, so book number two will be out on May the 12th. May the 12th will also be Underdog, book number six. May the 13th, The Alchemist, book number five. May the 14th, The Range, book number two. May the 18th, He Who Fights with Monsters, book number two, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, May the 18th, The Discardian, book number seven. May the 19th, Arcana Unlocked, book number two. Uh, May 21st, uh, The Punic Wars, book number three, The Great Centurion. May the 24th, The Prince of Power. This is the second book in the Imminent Realm series. Um, and this one's actually correct. That that shifted. Um, so May 25th, it'll be Hexworld. Um, May 27th, it'll be Kings, uh, Apoca, Apoca Cosmos, book number three. On May 28th, A Daring Plan and a Culture, which is the fourth fifth book in the Bone Knight series. On May 31st, it'll be The Dungeon Leader, uh, The Dungeon Slayers, book number three. June 7th, uh, Fantasia Online by Simon Nivelle, his first book publishing. He's worked for Magic Drum Books, which is a Russian translator uh, and publisher for, for quite a few years. And this is his first book that he's uh, published. So let's we'll see how that goes. Um, June 8th, it'll be Defiance of the Fall. On June 22nd, it'll be uh, Tyrium Online. On June 29th, Primacy Online, book number six. June 30th, it'll be Tower of Rune, volume two. Uh, July the 1st, Everborn, book number four. July 13th, Awakening. On July 20th, the second book in the Hex World series. On July 20th, it'll be They Call Me Matter. 
which is the second book in that particular series. July 27th, it'll be Frost World, Ice and Blood. Uh, July 27th, it'll be Player Witch is the Not, book number six. So all kinds of interesting things uh, coming up in the near future to look forward to. On to, though, our new releases and reviews. Okay, first review of the week is going to be Apocalypse, Various Systems, Systems of the Apocalypse, book number two, written by Macronomicon. It is 418 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, and here is the author's description. After Jebediah Tramper completed the impossible tutorial by cheating, the vet's been in something of a slump, his PTSD gradually guiding him down the path of self-harm. Crippled, stripped of his powers and homeless, he's got no reason to keep breathing until... A little girl is in trouble. That is a super vague um, but accurate um, description of like maybe the first ten percent of the story. Um, it is it essentially is the introduction without getting into any of the cool stuff that's happening in this story. Um, the first book in the series, I absolutely thought it was great. Um, it was uh, essentially RPG Apocalypse, where everybody was transported to this uh, tutorial, and they could choose like the level of difficulty with the greater the level. One chance that they're going to die, but also better rewards. And the main character actually choosing in, oh, impossible. Um, so it's the hardest mode. And essentially, you know, they have an adventure there. Uh, don't, not just well things, if you haven't read the series. Um, but in book two in the series, um, in the follow-up, um, all that's over. All that's finished. The main character is suffering the consequences of the end of that, of that, of that series. That first book where the gods have stripped away the system from him. That's not too spoilery. Uh, but it is kind of a big thing in that there is slightly less RPG stuff in this first, in the second book in the series. Um, uh, eventually that's, that's modified a little bit and that he gets a, a way to kind of peek at things like admin descriptions or, or his personal descriptions. But the way that he progresses is, is no longer based upon just getting, getting experience points for killing stuff. Um, there is, there's a deeper level of, of magic and, and, and magical theorizing, um, that he, that he gets involved with. There is still progression, but again, it isn't as, um, as, as frequent as the first book, which wasn't like super, you know, um, cringe in the first place. Um, so there, there is still RPG progression in the story. It is not as, again, frequent as other stories, but that doesn't make the story any less entertaining. There's a lot of other things that definitely make up for this. Um, it, it's still, there's tons of action from start to finish. It's, it's, it's a highly entertaining story. I see that even though the story is, is a little bit slice of life still, and that you're following the main character doing stuff in this, in this new, um, fantasy esque world, which we'll get into a second. Um, it, it, it's a little more structured, and you can see that there are, there's a bunch of things that are set up in the beginning of the story that that pan out and play out towards the end, and there's fall through and rewards. Um, so you can see that the second book is definitely a little more structured uh, than just simply being sliced away. So, uh, but the story is a, a, still a very fun piecing, um, and you get to follow this main character as he as he tries to figure out his his place in this world. Or humanity is the survivors of humanity, I should say, have been transported along with uh, portions of Earth and stitched into this fantasy RPG world. So the story itself kind of has this vibe of fantasy RPG um, uh, with like transport fantasy RPG with a little bit of an RPG apocalypse tied into it. Um, and that's mostly because the main character has in the story goes scavenging for parts and materials and monsters um, and, and, and places. And th there's a bunch of crafting there and survivalist kind of stuff when they go towards the um, un uh, unoccupied sections of where earth was stitched in this world. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of different mixes here, but it's all very, very entertaining. I had a, I had a really good time with this. Um, I actually had a great time. Um, but again, like I think the biggest shift as far as game mechanic is going to be the fact that it's a fairy system. Uh, that's why it's, it's titled that way. It's a, it's a progression system that is uh, tied into um, like fairy mythology. And I thought it was really nicely done and that it added... Uh, instead of just like stripping away the RPG system, like sucks for you, you're not going to do any or, or, because the author doesn't feel like dealing with the numbers. It's the author layered in a new system that matched perfectly with what existed um, and added like this almost secret hidden lore about what's really happening with the system and how to kind of exploit it a little bit. In, in different ways, and I uh, and without getting too spoilery, um, I thought it was really nicely done. I was like, oh, this is this is adding a nice bit of world building in addition to creating a specific uh, progression system for the main character and, and and a few select others. So really nice stuff there. 
Um, on the story side of things, again, it's really is it mostly slice of life with like some interesting um, arcing connections throughout the thing. But again, it, 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 this is a serial story that's, that's written online. And once it gets to a certain length, it kind of just c- c- cut off through degree and then published. Um, so you can still find like the continuing you know serial story online if you want to go read ahead a little bit before this is ready for publishing. But it's highly entertaining. Lots of good action, adventure, you know, good stuff. You get a few um, returning some characters from book number one, but it's mostly just the main character and his fairy companion, which I really liked because it gave the story an opportunity to kind of delve into their characters a little bit more. Um, I liked the way that the PTSD was was handled in that it felt um, realistic, but also just like a, a, a motivational factor for what the main character needs to do to survive. Um, and and it was kind of an exploration of his backstory and his character that that made him feel really fleshed out. Um, and I enjoyed that that aspect of it as well. But again, because it is a smaller story and the, mostly just these two main characters, um, it gave them an opportunity to see their experiences, their sense of humors, their thoughts and viewpoints in, in and having them being placed in this this alien civilization um so it was kind of fun and interesting even when it was just talking or swimming backstory so really good stuff i thought the story was great i birthed in this in a couple of sittings and it's not a small story it's it's, it's over what 418 pages um so that tells you how much i enjoy it for me it gets a score of eight out of ten uh that's a great review score that's apocalypse fairy system system of the apocalypse book number two with the score of eight out of ten i thought it was great Okay, up next is Goblin Summoner, a deck building LBG written by Tracy Gregory. It is 662 pages, $3.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. Life and death decided by the draw of a card. With an, when an accident claims his life, Gareth finds himself reborn on Acamedia. Ac- Ac- Dropped into a world where sorcerers draw magical powers from a deck of cards, summoning monsters and fleeing spells, Gareth must adapt to having arcane power at his fingertips. It's just a shame he's found himself with the weakest cards around, goblins. Joined by a fallen goddess, a deposed a demon king, and surly local, Gareth sets out into a Akamida in a realm where experience points and levels are very well. Gareth must grow stronger if he intends to have his second life last longer than his first. With monsters around every corner and dungeons beneath his feet, uh, Akamida is a dangerous place. As Gareth finds new cards, he can use power the rumbles of the war stirrings of the West. If he's going to survive, Gareth will need to master his deck and find the strength hidden within his goblin allies. Okay, um, this is a transported to a fantasy RPG world with uh, like trading game card mechanics used as an RPG progression and battle system. Um, and while I honestly really appreciate the uh, effort of the author to explore different genres and game mechanics, another series that the author has done is deals with the real-time strategy. This one deals with card mechanics and it seems like the author is trying to find different a different niche in like his right to market system uh, to 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 find readers um and while i enjoyed the other story which is like space um and rp and real-time strategy this one was less entertaining i think a lot of that has to do with the uh, kind of a conflict between the storytelling and the the way the, the game system was set up um so overall um while i again appreciate the the, the risk of, of trying this new system, it didn't work out for me. I, and to be honest, because of some storytelling issues involved with that, I got kind of bored and I'll explain why I got bored, but essentially that, that's what happened to me. Um, first of all, when I see the positives again, the get card game mechanics, probably the best part of the story. They're well thought out. You could tell they were based upon popular card games like Hearthstone and Magic Gathering. So they're going to be some familiar mechanics for anybody who's ever played those games. And those are, of course, massively popular games. Um, each deck holder had a specific theme for their monsters and spells that they could summon, clear costs and effects of the cards, and ability to upgrade the decks and deck holders um, as the level got different feats and mana options available to them that they could choose like the different progression paths. Um, and the rules are so clearly thought out that the author, even at the end of the book, has formalized rules that the reader can actually read through and, and kind of play the game themselves if they really wanted to. Um, there's nothing groundbreaking about the system, but it is consistent and it is faithful to to an actual real card game. So good on the author for taking the time to go through that. Uh, you could tell it's a lot of effort and something that's really customized. Um, the action of the story, when it's not based upon the card system itself, 
isn't that bad. Um, the larger scale stories towards the end of the story felt um, appropriately complex um, and like rushed and frenetic. So that, that was that, that's a plus. Um, On to the negative stuff, the stuff that bothered me and essentially kind of dragged this down uh, to a place where I was like, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm a little I'm bored here. Um, and the biggest thing is the fact that the story is really predictable, at least for me, for other people, not so much. There are a lot of other people who really seem to enjoy this as of this uh, recording um, has like 20 reviews, mostly positive stuff. Um, but for me, I, I, I could just see things happening uh, kind of chapters ahead in advance. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, this character is not going to die. And this, this one's going to come back as an ally. And this is going to be a betrayal or this is going to, and it, 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 the story wasn't surprising. There's nothing really pulling in this story that really surprised. I kept expecting, I hoping for rather, um, some interesting twist, an unexpected character death, some kind of surprise, but nope. And a lot of that has to do with kind of the way that the comet is set up when it comes to the, um, the, the card mechanics, the game, the, the card game mechanics. Um, there's an inherent conflict for me, at least in the fundamental system in that the card game system does not have a, a way to implement loss without the main character or the players or the characters essentially dying. Um, and that was a problem for me because it, it kind of said to me in the story, Oh, and none of your main characters are going to die. So no matter what happened in the story, um, that there's never any risk because you could see the main character wasn't going to die because he would have to have lost. And, and, or there was like some story to us where somebody would lose, but they would just magically escape without any kind of consequences. And as I, it, 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 it did a couple of things for me in that it lowered the stakes of the story that, that there's really no negative consequence to, to, to the system, uh, the game card system. Um, and secondly, it kind of messed up the, uh, a, a portion of card games for me that for me, a good card game a trading card game, part of, part of the draw is the draw is that there's the element of randomness in your deck. Like you don't, you're not really sure what you're going to, like you, you can know every single card. You can have a bunch of strategies built into it, but ultimately it's kind of, it's, it's a random pick of, you know, five or six cards and you kind of play the best that you can with the hand that you're dealt and the resources and part of the, 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 the satisfaction in winning games that you you played it well you, you outplayed your opponent you implemented your strategy you countered their strategy um but there is an element of randomness that that even if you have a really good deck if you get a you know a bad hand you're sol um and that doesn't exist in the story you could tell in 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 the story that there are many fights and many battles that are kind of pre-planned in advance as far as like what cards come through and because there is no um story mechanic for the main character to lose without being murdered by an enemy potentially if he loses um he can't lose and so there's often like oh a lucky draw where you get that that super you know uber rare card that magically kills all the enemies um without a high mana cost um and that happens more than once um and he gets a great combo or like you can tell like a hand is, is specifically drawn to highlight a, a a weird feature or characteristic of that particular deck uh, to kind of show off a gameplay mechanic instead of actually being a random draw um and and so those things kind of felt like oh they were, those 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 fights are are prescripted to a degree um and if, if i could if i couldn't tell it if it was wonderfully done where it's like, oh, it felt random, great. But this didn't. And so that, for me, really drew down uh, my enjoyment of the story because I could tell that these fights were pretty Like, the main character wasn't going to lose. So there was no no tension in the story from, from, from those battles. And they became predictable and boring. And because those elements were predictable, a lot of the rest of the story was very easily to predict and say, oh, this is going to happen, this, this, and this. And you're not going to kill these characters because you're going to use them later. They're too quirky. And and you're underpowering this character, you know, um, for some reason, because you're going to use them later. And it was just, it was for me, it was like, oh, okay, that's, this is not entertaining. This is kind of tedious and boring to some degree. Um, okay. Other aspects of the story, nicely done. Um, but that was just one of the components that just didn't stop me from enjoying it, unfortunately. Um, now another big, and again, this is, this is definitely more of a personal thing is that it, even if those aspects is just said, I could probably still have enjoyed myself if other things kind of made up for it. Like, oh, the world building was amazing or the dialogue was fun and the adventures they went on were really great. Um, but again, that 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 didn't kind of exist. Like, there is some world building that happens here. 
but it wasn't particularly deep. Um, the dialogue was probably something that I had an issue with, not not in and of itself, and that the, the writing is bad, or that the, the banter isn't you know quirky. Um, but it felt forced because of the setup of the story, and that the characters are drawn together from very different backgrounds. Um, but it feels like the instant they come together, they they they're super friendly and they're super quirky and they're bantering back and forth, and it just doesn't make sense. When one character, the main character, is from Earth and he's transported here after he dies, another character is a fallen goddess who spent thousands of years just sifting through through dead people's lives you know, in, in like hundreds of thousands of you know, different worlds. And then there was a native lizard girl. Um, another way, eventually it's like a demon lord, which is, I wasn't sure who's in the novel description, but it, it is. Who's been frozen in time for, you know, thousands and thousands of years. Um, and, and so they have very different backgrounds, but they just magically happen to mesh together and have like witty banter conversations um, based upon, <laughs> and they seem to have the same cultural references. Um, and it just felt forced, unfortunately for me. So I, I couldn't get into that because I couldn't look past that point because, and, the, and this is one of the storytelling things, there wasn't enough time given to develop their backstories or, or, or give them some commonalities to build those relationships on. So they just instantly had magical friendships and it didn't feel earned. And so for me, that was kind of a negative draw as well. Um, so because of those issues, um, overall, again, while I appreciate the author trying a new game mechanic, um, it wasn't enough to make the story entertaining. Um, I, I didn't dislike the story. I didn't have any negative feelings for it. Um, th there were just story issues that stopped me from enjoying it. Even I got bored with it, even though I'm like, okay, this is the next battle. And then finishing it all the way through and, and kind of appreciating how, how the story is, is building up is fine. But again, by that time I'm like, oh, okay, I've kind of lost interest in it because I'm, I'm kind of bored with it. Um, so for me, get to score a five out of 10. Again, not necessarily a negative review. Just, I got bored with it. Other people didn't. Um, that's perfectly fine. Um, always go check these things out for yourself if you think you're be interested in it. That's Goblin Summoner, though, for me. A deck building little RPG with a score of 5 out of 10. Okay, next up is going to be Null Form, book number one. A real RPG series written by Dem uh, Mikhailov. Okay, it is 350 pages, $3.90 is available on Kindle Limited, and here's the author's description. In this world, everyone starts with no memory and no recollection of their past life. In this world, you have nothing, even your limbs are rented, and you'll have to pay up every day. In this world, you must complete tasks assigned to you by the system where you find and stripped of everything, including your arms and legs. In this world, you're under... Unrelenting supervision, but in dark corners hidden from the system's watchful eye, violence, brutality, and lawlessness abound. In this world, you're assigned a number. You're a volatile null form. Now it's up to you to adapt to this reality and try to survive without ending up crippled. Just don't mess up or you'll be wishing you were dead as you dig yourself deeper into an endless pit of debt. This world will not take pity on you. You'll have to work tirelessly to earn the right to live another day. So there we go. And in this world, it sorry doesn't work for me. Um, full disclosure: this I received advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. But if I'm mentally, that's that. That's what it is. The uh, the novel description is not inaccurate. Um, it's slightly like repetitive, but that's a different issue. Um, this story from the publisher, mater like publishing material, uh, promotion materials, calls this a real RPG story. Um, and while I've seen that, that, that used in other stories before, mostly Russian literary stories that are translated and set in like a real world of some kind or some kind of real world aspect, um, as in like not VR, not transported to a fantasy magic world. Um, this is, this is, this is a little bit different. Um, it is set in the real world, but it's set in more of a, um, ap apocalypse world in the far future, dark and dystopian. Um, and there are no RPG aspects at all. None whatsoever. Um, part of the promotion material is also that this is one of the this is the or one of the earliest series from an author who would eventually write a, an actual you know, fantasy liberty story, um, and it predates even the the creation of the of the word liturgy in in like the Russian literature. Um, and, it, and it's like it goes on to inspire famous names in Russian liturgy. Um, and in that respect, reading the story, I can see how this is kind of a a, a precursor to liturgy. There are game notifi there are notifications rather. Um, there are maps. There's like text that pops in front of a main character and the characters. They give them like uh, 
quest descriptions and um, and like their their balance scores and like the cost of items and everything. So you can see there is kind of this um, artificial reality kind of interface system in this story. But again, there is no actual progression system here. Um, there, there's no XP, there's no levels, there's none of that. There's there's not even stats um, for, for them to increase or decrease. Um, the most you could probably say is that there's, they earn money um, and they have costs associated with like their existence in this like dark dystopian apocalypse kind of world. Um, but to call it real RPG seems like a stretch to me. So if you're looking for something that's real crunchy, that is like gamified elements or, or RPG systems, this isn't it. Uh, there are other things that are good about the story. Um, but for me, because that's what I was expecting with that particular title or that particular, um, description, I was disappointed and didn't ultimately work for me. But there are other things that I think other readers will enjoy. Um, I'd say the story is more closely related to post-apocalypse or maybe cyberpunk story because it does take place in a Soviet world where the main character wakes up with new arms and legs attached to him having no memory of who he is or where he is. The story is mostly slice of life and that you're following the main character as he learns the rules of this world where every aspect of survival is provided at a cost. And if you can't pay or go too far into debt, your arms and legs are renting or taken away from you by force by, by the mechanical system in this world. Um, it's a very dark story um, that classifies workers into categories of usefulness which have slang terms like zombie, goblin, or calfling, um, but they're not really related to those like fantasy races. They're, they have no physiological uh, connection. They're actually um, uh, slang terms for abbreviations for their particular class system of like how much work they can do and how much um, rewards they get and how dangerous their missions are going to get. Um, that's, that's as far as that connecting goes, which again, you can see like the proto literary PG elements in it, but there's no actual you know RPG system here. Uh, in the story, the main character has to figure out a way to keep out of debt. Um, and that's what the story is. It, it really is just, it's just that. And and him experiencing this dark world, um, real, you know, figuring out the AI-driven system that runs things and how there were hidden um, areas where like super dark things happen, even though uh, the system is, is automated and tries to provide for humanity and, and kind of be self-sustaining. Um, you can see like there, there are these logical exploitations that people do for the system. Um, and that's kind of what it is. There, there is no, you know, RPG system here. Uh, at most, there are like like little mini games people play, like tic tac toe or a battleship. Um, and but they're just for extra credits. So there's no RPG system here. So it's not really literally geo game. So if you're expecting that again, this is not going to satisfy you. And that's why it doesn't kind of work for me. Um, but there are again other things that people seem to enjoy. And I think that people who don't have that same expectations might actually really like this as just like this dark, um, dystopian apocalypse, you know, story written from a Russian author. And though the, uh, if you're go going into the story expecting that, I think you'll actually really enjoy it. Um, but for me, again, I was expecting something else. Um, and so my expectations weren't fulfilled and it just didn't kind of work for me as somebody who loves lit RPG, who loves game lit, who loves like those, those stories and those numbers and those classes and all that other stuff. Um, and so it was kind of disappointing in that respect. Um, but if, if you like depressing and dark stories, um, <laughs> I think you'll like this. Uh, it just didn't work for me, unfortunately. Uh, so we get to score a six out of 10. That's a null form book number one real RPG series with the score of six out of 10. Okay. Next up is triple S or SSS class suicide hunter. Um, it is a web comic, uh, officially 23 chapters in the English licensed version. There is uh, more fan translations of this, uh, all the way up to chapter 33 as of this recording. Um, it is licensed by, uh, tapas, in English, and the first three chapters are free. The rest is, uh, is behind a paywall. So, uh, but you can find it other places on the internet if you search for uh, SSS uh, Suicide Hunter. Um, here is the um, webcomic description. It says, "In the mysterious RPG dungeon-like tower, Confucius Kim lives a mundane existence, envying all the star hunters. One day, his wish for more is granted with the legendary skill to copy others' abilities at the cost of his life." Before he can make sense of it, he is killed by the number one hunter, the Flame Emperor. But this activates a skill, and now he's copied a new one, the ability to travel back in time upon death. How can if you just seek, use these skills to outplay the competition and rise to the top? It's actually a really good description of like the fundamental 
um, premise of the story. The gets into his main powers immediately. His his core power being he he gets a copy of a skill um, of, of somebody who kills him, which seems like a one off. Uh, because he picks a, a skill from the first one he kills him, where he gets to travel back in time after he's killed, it kind of also adds in this regressor time travel um, aspect to it, where he has future knowledge and he can like prevent his own death, or he can use use that foreknowledge um, to 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 plan ahead, to to plan out how to fight a monster, or to to get stronger before he goes and fights it, um, or to kind of outwit his opponents. And there's some really like interesting aspect to this. Um, the the main kind of story world is set in the modern world, uh, where there are hunters. People who use to climb, you know, uh, climb into the tower to fight monsters, get levels, um, that kind of stuff, um, you know. Uh, and, and so there's this whole world revolving around, you know, the people who are empowered by the system to 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 go and fight into the tower and, and to level up, all the hope of like, you know, saving mankind from an end of the world kind of apocalypse uh, that that that's supposed to eventually happen. Um, and so there, there's interesting stuff. I think the part I like the most about the story is the kind of the smart, intelligent element of like, oh, the main character being able to die, seeing his failure, um, but at the same time, seeing his intelligence in, in planning things and in, in working super hard to overcome those odds because he starts out super weak and eventually powers up as he you know, levels and finally figures out the way to do things. Um, and I really just enjoyed that, that intelligent kind of planning aspect and, and kind of getting the bad guys together come up. And even though he might have to die a dozen times to, to finally do it. Um, and it's a really interesting mechanic that, that you don't haven't seen a lot of places, I've seen a few of the places, but not a lot. And it's done really well. I'm going to actually show you the, uh, some of the artwork here in the story. Um, well, part of it, let's see if I can expand this a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. We'll just leave it there. Um, so you can see the the artwork that, that's coming through. Really clear, clean the lines, um, good shading, good text, emotions come through. Um, so the artwork really does, does pan out uh, as far as um, things coming through. And you can see kind of the beginning portion of that storyline of, of him having a dream to become you know, a hunter or somebody with, you know, the RPG powers and a, and a set and a way to become more powerful in this, in this world. Um, and just getting this rare skill, rare, rare skill, but he has to die to, to activate it. So it seems pretty useless at the beginning. And it, of course, useless things become useful in, in the correct circumstances. And that's part of the story of him turning those, that, 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 uh, poor aspect into a, in a, into a, into an opportunity to, to grow powerful. So there you go. Um, for me, get the score of eight out of 10. I really, I really did enjoy, uh, the story, I enjoy the artwork, and I, it's one of my favorite weekly reads when it does come out. Um, and so for me, the score of eight out of 10, that's a SSS class suicide hunter, uh, with a score of eight out of 10. And that's it for the show. Thank you very much for listening, for watching. Um, remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our website at lidrpgpodcast.com. And we're also available on Spotify, Audible, new places to, 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 to listen to the show. And you can subscribe to us, of course, any of those places that you're at. Uh, YouTube is always probably the best and the first way you can see the video version of the podcast and, and you get notifications when a new episode is out. So feel free to subscribe there if you like the show. And of course, we have some links in the in the notes for other Facebook groups where literary authors and readers get together and chat and get recommendations for new stories. Um, so we have links in the show notes for that as well. So thanks again for hanging out with me today, though, ladies and gentlemen, and for you know indulging my my love of this genre of literary. Um, but until we can hang out again, remember to go read some literary. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>